Welcome to the channel. For today's deck, I've combined all the spotlight cash cards. That's Namora, it's Black Knight, and it's Scar. So we're going to take this into Ranked Infinite. Right now I am ranked 9,009, and we will see how this deck does. My thoughts on Namora is that she's a pretty strong card, not broken, uh, not overpowered, just strong. And what she enables you to do in this specific deck is take two diverging win conditions. So hopefully we'll see both of those play out. And there's an argument to be said that I should flip the two. So we just kind of have to hope that Infinite goes left and that's it. Okay, first up we have Monkey Maxing. A pretty good starting hand, a very good starting hand. I'm going to snap into this. This is absolutely fantastic. So I'm just going to play Black Knight into the vault. I will see what they play into the vault and see what uh, how much power I really need to commit there. Red Hulk, fantastic. Okay, so it's kind of going to compete Ooh, with the Nexus. The Nexus. So I'm going to play Lady Sith left because next turn I will have the Ebony Blade from Black Knight. So I will probably play the Ebony Blade into Nexus and then I can get the Nomura buff next turn. And then potentially Sean, or potentially I finish with a large card. Hopefully, yikes. They got Mr. Negative on turn... <laughs> on turn three. Now, hopefully, I can draw into... Oh, that's fantastic. Hopefully, I can draw into... Wake. So now it is a decision between Ghost Rider and Ebony Blade. I think I always play Ebony Blade. If I play Quake, I can get that into the vault. I can move Nexus over to where the vault is. I am Iron Man. So now we just have to hope I draw into Quake, which is why she's in the deck. Scar will actually be free. Interesting. So I think I just load up into the vault in the hopes that the 25% chance comes through. If they snap, I probably have to leave. If you don't subscribe, this nerd will cry himself to sleep. Okay, Black Panther, and then Zola. That is actually beautiful. This is a guaranteed win if I draw Quake. Please, Quake, please, please, please. Please, Quake. Please. Oh, no, Quake. No Quake. Do you think Shang-Chi's enough? Can we start first game eight cubes? And it's just Zabu, Scar, and Sean? Let's send it. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, devastation. Oh, somebody call the ambulance. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Complete and utter annihilation. This this performance exceeded my expectations. We obliterated a Mr. Negative on turn three. 
just absolute domination. So much power on the board. It didn't even matter that Scar was free, quite frankly, because it would have been two because we had the Ebony Blade down, we had Infinite down. So Scar would have been two. I only would have missed out on the Zabu, three points worth of Zabu. And clearly they have zero points <laughs> into the Nexus. And that is why Sean is in the deck. What Zabu allows you to do is you play him on turn five, potentially with Lady Sith, potentially with Quake, or just by himself. And then on the last turn, you can play two of your four costs, which are Ghost Rider to bring back your large card, Infinite, Red Hulk, or Scar, and then Sean to just clean up another lane. And this was just a masterpiece. Okay, next up we have Katos, rank 2000 player. Our hand, uh, I'm sticking through. This hand is kind of nice. Now, if I could draw into Black Knight, it would be even nicer. Okay, they are running a similar deck to me. Except it is probably Hella. Sean is nice for that. So now I need to kind of manage priority. Okay, I play Lady Sif. That gets rid of my Red Hulk. Or do I play... I think I play her right, because I, I want Captain Marvel to get more of a buff. And then I will potentially play Namora elsewhere. But I'm also not going to have priority. Black Knight, a little too late. So I play Captain Marvel here. Okay, I think because I played Captain Marvel a turn after, the Dracula goes off first and then Captain Marvel determines where to move. But I also have the cards in my hand that I need, so I think I just play Gamora left. Yeah, I get rocks in my deck. But that's okay. Again, because I have the cards that I need in my hand. And that, so that's why Zabu is nice. Zabu! What did I discard again? A Red Hulk. I think the Red Hulk was at 13. So that's 16 points. Yeah, because see, if I was able to get Zabu down, I could play Ghost Rider and Sean. If I play Sean now, that's 15 to 15. So it's just, where do I want my Captain Marvel to potentially move? If she moves right, and then I can move Muir Island as well. So I think that's what I do. Let's show off Quake a little bit. We've showed off Namora. So if I play Ghost Rider left, that brings back Red Hulk left. And then if I play Quake here, that gets up to 25 points of power. So this is going to be a Hella Casino last turn. So I will just roll the dice. And there's an argument to be said that I should flip the two. So we just kind of have to hope that Infinite goes left, and that's it. <laughs> to me. And that's why it's a casino. Higher, further, faster, but... <laughs> Fantastic. So... Victory. I have just won three games in a row. I'm still learning this deck. 
And boy, I don't even know what to say. You saw how Namora can buff the two cards, a 10 plus Captain Marvel that can move. So of course I abandoned middle because I couldn't Sean middle. I also had priority or maybe I Sean a random lane. But also, I I haven't played Captain Marvel much, so I forgot that she is going to move. So I think even if they split, I still would have won. So if they both went right, I think I lose 25. Yes, if they both go right, I lose. If they split or both go left, clearly I won. And listen, we just took out a top 2,000 player. I will... Take the, the other win. Okay, next up we have my P I N I T. Our hand is very top heavy. They got one of our good cards. Captain Marvel's okay into Morag. We do have Lady Sith. That's nice. So I think the plan is I play Lady Sith right. Definitely right. I play Captain Marvel left. I play Namora right. And then kind of see where I land. So again, this is me thinking multiple turns in advance. Scar is okay. Not as good as an Infinite, but I'll take it. I do have Quake. So I would need to play Quake in the middle. And I think that's possible. So I will wait one more turn. Face the might of Asgard. And then I will probably shift cards mid into Morag. But also we just drew Ghost Rider. So I'm playing Namora. I'm sticking on the plan. So I play Namora. Captain Marvel gets up to 10. Depending on what they play in the Mojo world, I could Ghost Rider. I could Quake somewhere. And then Ghost Rider mid. I could give up Mojo world. I am in a pretty strong position. And with a 10 power roving Captain Marvel... I, I like where this is headed, and I have multiple options on the last turn. Or one option, I guess, and that's Quake and Ghost Rider. And so now this is just going to depend what my opponent does, and then from there I will determine how to play out the rest of my turn six, where exactly my cards are going to go. But right now I am leaning toward having Quake move Mojo World. But I will see. Hmm. Okay, so it's 14 to 11. If I play Ghost Rider, discarded Scar, so Ghost Rider's 14 points, so I get up to 25. So they would need to add... Yeah, that's quite a bit to add. Hmm. Or 11. Do I just throw right? Hmm. I mean, they have to play right, though. So maybe I do Ghost Rider here and Quake here. But then they could go hard mi mid. Uh, I'll roll the dice. Are ye worthy? Nice. I think this does. Yeah, man, the Quake play right here. So that's just enough because Captain Marvel is going to move mid. 
and I'm going to have 13 mid. I have my two cards left. So I actually win any tiebreaker potentially. This deck is slick, I'm telling you. And what I may end up doing, if I haven't already, if you haven't noticed, I may just leave this whole unedited clip and just fast forward through the in-between games parts because I'm having massive levels of success. Okay, next up we have Jay Hay. Please get rid of my Infinite. Ghost Rider kind of stinks. <laughs> And at least they their leech went away. If you're watching this after the over the air update, leech should be less of a problem. And now I can't use blade because my infinite's hiding. So I kind of have to hope I draw into Lady Sif. I do not. So the Captain Marvel Namora line is here, so I guess that's what I'm going with. The Limbo does buy me an opportunity to play Infinite. So I just play Captain Marvel here. Next turn, I play Namora right. You do not have to play Namora mid, by the way. You can play her in any lane. A Living Tribunal deck. I don't think I am equipped to fight back against the Living Tribunal deck. Scar will be discounted. I can't bring anything back with Ghost Rider, but I can get an Ebony Blade if I so choose. And I think this might be the loss we run up against. Cards that cost no that so Quake doesn't really have value this game. They didn't lose one of their key pieces for their combo. So I can skip and play Infinite. I can load up two two locations. That's probably my best play. And so I may end up retreating. The reason I say loading up two locations is because when you play a Living Tribunal deck, of course all their power gets spread. Behold my mighty hand. Uh, and I move Crimson Cosmos for him. Okay, there we go. Our first retreat. I usually say retreat later, but this is... Eh, we'll retreat later. But there's no way I'm... Um, winning this i just removed crimson the crimson cosmos restriction for the living tribunal but also oh Escaped. yeah actually i didn't even realize it, this was probably still a worthwhile retreat because i couldn't get more power but actually moving crimson cosmos here was a good play which is why they gave me the angry face on quake because the cards they wanted to play here, Iron Man, are either 1, 2, and th or 3. So they wouldn't be able to play on this lane. They'd have to play on a different lane. But they drew all but one card in their deck. So if they have Mystique, they could just play Mystique in the Living Tribunal lane and Iron Man, and I'm cooked. So, yeah, this was just a, a good retreat. Get out of here with one cube loss. I will take it. I've been on a fantastic winning streak otherwise. Okay, next up we have Titanium Phantom. The one and only. Oh, if only I had drawn only one card. Get the Black Knight down. I probably won't be able to play the Blade. So now it's hoping we draw Lady Sif. Yeah, keep holding strong and have to just draw on the Lady Sif. Hmm. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yuck. So I get denied a draw. I will play Captain Marvel right. Namora middle. There is Sean Chi. Now I draw Lady Sif. You're welcome. <laughs> no problem. Okay, I can't Sean everywhere. Did I discard anything? Because my memory stinks. No. So I could Sean and Blade? So if I play Blade here and Sean here, I might be able to squeak out a win because the Captain Marvel can move if necessary. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So yeah, I think I am able to pull this out because Captain Marvel is worth 10. And there we go. Fantastic. Two point win in one lane, one point win in another. We picked the right lane to play Sean into because if Captain Marvel had moved middle by herself, that would have only been 15 and they had more than 15 middle. So a fantastic win with this deck. I am have a very high win rate, uh, whatever, I don't keep track of that, but I've definitely gained plenty of ranks. So that's where we're gonna end things. I gained plenty of ranks. I'm 7,523 right now. And this deck is just fantastic. I like Namora. She's not super necessary and important by all means. The deck still functions without her, quite honestly. But She's kind of a fun card for me, and I like using her, so I'm glad I spent my keys, even though it took four of them. So this deck has a number of different winning lines, and you got to see most, if not all of them. There's Quake, who can just shift around locations and make it so unpredictable for your opponent. Nobody expects Quake. You have your discard activators in Blade and Lady Sif, targeted discards, so you can pick what you are discarding. You have Black Knight to get an Ebony Blade. That can't be Shang-Chi, you have Shang-Chi himself. For any big cards that your opponent plays, you have your big cards yourself, your Red Hulk, your Scar, and your Infinite. You have Captain Marvel, which is just moving power, unpredictable. You have Zabu. Maybe you didn't get to see that this for this highlight package. Quiet, Zabu. Now is not the time. But playing him on turn five is fantastic because that allows you to play Ghost Rider and Sean or Sean and Captain Marvel, or Ghost Rider and Captain Marvel. And you have Nomura to give a total of 16 power under the right conditions, or 11 power. And this deck is just a very strong performer. I was instantly impressed with it, and I highly recommend it. So, until next time.